In this video, I show you how I built this large storage cabinet for my garage. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to build stuff yourself, please subscribe and hit the bell notification button so you don't miss any videos. Hi, I'm AJ and you're watching Woodified. I like to draw my projects in SketchUp Make. It's a free CAD software that's easy to learn. I'll leave a link in the description below to my SketchUp file. When I build with sheet materials like plywood, I add the parts to a program called Cutlist. Cutlist generates a cutting diagram to best utilize the sheet materials. I've made a video on how I use Cutlist and I'll put a link in the description. Check it out. I'm using 3 quarter inch plywood for this project and I picked up a clamping straight edge uh, for this project as my table saw can only rip up to 12 inches wide. Setting up the clamp, each cut was time consuming and a pain in the butt. I built two of these 4 foot by 8 foot, 2 foot deep garage cabinets. Then I decided it was time to upgrade my table saw. Here I'm running the pieces through my table saw as my measurements using the straight edge with the circular saw were a little off. My new table saw can rip up to 32 and a half inches. This project would have gone much faster if I had my new table saw. Come to think of it, I probably should have bought it before I did this project. The narrow strips I just finished ripping on my table saw are four inch wide and they are the supports for the bottom and middle shelves. Here I'm marking the location of the pocket holes and drilling all the pocket holes in the support pieces. Next I attach the front and back support pieces to the bottom shelf. Then I came back and added the center. I also added more pocket holes to the ends of the support pieces. I'm drilling more pocket holes for the middle and the top shelf supports. With the long pieces I realized I need to build some wings for my pocket hole jig. For this project I came up with a quick fix and here you can see I have a piece of walnut board on one side and on the other I have my two foot level and that will get me by for this project. In this shot I'm attaching the supports to the middle shelf and all I did was do the front and the back. I did the sides once I put the cabinet together. The hardware store where I bought the plywood cut the plywood down so I could get it home in the van without taking out any child seats. Two of the sheets I had them cut two feet off and these are the outer sides of the cabinet. I drilled a few more pocket holes in the underside of the base before screwing the sides to the bottom. And I did the same thing to the middle shelf. For the middle shelf I made sure the front of the shelf was flush with the front of the sides of the cabinet. I then put in a couple screws to hold the shelf in place. With the cabinet standing up I can come back and measure to make sure that the middle shelf is at the same spot and then I can add the extra screws. I also added extra screws to the top of the cabinet. Next I trimmed up a piece to use as a middle support and I had to cut a little notch out so it would fit around the support that's at the top of the cabinet. I marked the middle of the cabinet and then I used the middle ply in the plywood to line up the middle shelf. I cut some thin strips of plywood to use as shelf supports and these shelves will float on top of these. And you can see I use random widths. I basically cut the leftover scrap pieces of plywood I had to make those shelf supports. With the carcass and the shelves complete, I moved on to the doors. And here I'm cutting up six foot piano hinge. I cut it in half so I have four three foot sections. And I just use the angle grinder to cut it in half and then I smooth off the sharp edges. I couldn't find a self-centering drill bit at the hardware store but I did find this self-centering punch. 
So I used that to punch the holes, drilled out the holes, and then I put the screws in place. So I bought 5.8 screws, however, they were not thick enough. I had number 5 diameter, which the heads of the screws just popped right through the holes on the piano hinge. So had I put this cabinet door up, it would have most likely fallen off. Uh, I went back and bought number 6 diameter, which that fixed the hinge. I marked the center of the hinge, and I marked where the center of the door opening was. I used my center hole punch to punch the holes, drilled it out, and then I installed the hinge with the screws. And then I repeated those steps three more times. And here's the completed cabinet. I built two of these cabinets for my garage. Some of the changes that I'll make is I'm going to go back and add some corner bracing to keep the cabinet from rocking side to side. I've also added to one of the cabinets magnetic door catches. At some point I think I'll go back and also paint the cabinets. If you like this video please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.